Eden by Obsess Much. Read by S.S.J. DeBusk. I don't own Harry Potter or Eden. Harry Potter is owned and written by J.K. Rowling and the W.B. And Eden is written by Obsess Much on fanfiction.net. Chapter 22. Trust me. Macbeth. This is a sorry sight, looking at his hand. Lady Macbeth. A foolish thought to say a sorry night. Sorry sight. Sorry sight? I, 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 Ridiculously ridiculous. Ridiculously ridiculous, and I'm not starting it over. Macbeth. There's one did laugh in his sleep and cried murder. <laughs> that they did wake each other. I stood and heard them. But they did say their prayers. And address them again to sleep. Lady Macbeth. There are two lounged together. Macbeth. One cries, God bless us. And I'm in the other. And they had seen me with these hangman's hands listening with their fears. I could not say I meant. When they did say God bless us. Lady Macbeth. Consider it not so deeply. Macbeth. But wherefore could I not pronounce Amen? I had not seen a blessing and Amen stuck in my throat. Lady Macbeth, these deeds must not be thought after these words. So it will make us mad. Uh, William Shakespeare? Uh, Macbeth. <laughs> I forgot to do that. I was like, what? And then I was like, oh, I have to do that. Uh... <sighs> Normally I pick myself up from the floor, staring at the closed door, wishing I could look right through the wood, right through the wood, to see Lucius on the other side. In the silence I could hear a sharp banging noise, something like hitting a wall, before footsteps moved swiftly away from my room. Then there's silence. Aw, he like slay he was angry because he's like, God, I don't want to have sex with her, and then like slammed the wall and then walked away. Can anybody else like feel how adorable that is? It's not adorable. I have issues while I'm gonna drink coffee. I swear to God, I really do with this book. I'm not even done, and I'm like, ah! <laughs> I'm done chapter twenty. I actually really thought I was gonna stop doing. It. I mean, like, I'm pretty good at keeping with something. And I kind of adore this book, and I feel like I'm going to listen to these later and be like, I'm, I miss Eden, and like read along, like ten years from now or whatever. Because that's why I like downloaded all of my Immortals so I can listen to it later if I feel like it. And I totally have. I've listened to my Immortal like five times, and I'm like, that is so worth it. Just like this is worth it. I think this is a disturbing story. <laughs> no, no, no question that it's not right, but maybe it's right because it's not right. <laughs> I don't know. There's heart to it. There's a deep silence to everything that makes it beautiful. Because, I mean, they're not talking, but they're saying a lot. You know what I mean? Anyways, um, which is the kind of the kind of stuff I like. Because, I mean, most things are not said. Most things are felt, so, and you don't, you don't always, you know, I don't know. Some books are just so obsessed with like dialogue, and I, I, it's funny because my book is obsessed with dialogue. I talk all the time, but I mean, there's a lot of like unspoken stuff that's probably more important than the actual words that are coming out of their mouth. And I think this author obsessed much, uh, Jennifer or whatever. I think she really gets that about life. And I applaud her as an artist. <laughs> as an artist, I I do. Um, okay. Anyways, that's adorable. He's like slam, he's like punches the wall. I'm so angry. Oh, I love her so much. <laughs> um In a daze I lift my hand up to my face. Resting my fingers lightly on my lips. They feel bruised, even though he barely touched me. Everything's hazy. It's as if I'm surrounded by a heavy mist and nothing's clear. Nothing makes sense. 
I forced myself to move, to walk out slowly over, across the room, and climb into my bed. And it's, long, and it's a long time before merciful, merciful, merciful sleep eases the endless tangles of my thoughts and emotion and encompasses dark, in compassionate darkness. I dream of nothing, of darkness, of wonderful emptiness. It can't last forever, of course. I drift in... If I'm not recording this, I'm going to be so mad. Okay, I am. <laughs> okay, sorry. I drift into consciousness. Oh, I said consciousness right once, twice. Oh my god. Three times, I think. Yeah, no, maybe. Who knows? Whatever. Uh, yeah, three times. Derp. What? The warm blanket of sleep. <laughs> I'm going to go right back into it. Um, The warm blanket of sleep. Sipping up. Slipping off of me and oh yes, <laughs> I can do this. I'm not being silly right now. I'm waiting for Vampire Diaries, which is really bad, really bad show. But this episode is going to be good. Oh, that's the last thing I do. Okay, I drift into consciousness. Oh, four times. The warm blanket of sleep slips off of me and and leaves me awake in the hold. It doesn't make any sense. I mean, I guess it does, but whatever. Uh, I open my eyes. And in the blissful moments of unaware sharp. Sharp enough quickly, and I'm reminded of everything I want to forget. Dolohoff's dead body, and Lucius's hands on my body. He shouldn't say body twice. Um, his lips on mine. You might want to get up. We need to talk. It's him, his voice. It's so cold, so clipped. Businesslike, I sit up. He's standing on the other side of the room. His arms are folded, and his face is stony. Businesslike, <laughs> just keep saying businesslike. It'll eventually sound good. Um, I pull myself up from the bed, tipping over the blanket as I do so. Tripping over the blanket as I do so, I stumble to the ground, banging my knee painfully. Tuts impatiently. You still have all the social. You still possess all the social graces of a drunken tramp. I see. He draws cruelly. Some things are beyond redemption, I suppose. Pick yourself up. How can he... How can he be so cold after everything that happened when he saw me last? How can... How can he just stand there and treat me as if there's nothing changed since we first captured me? When really everything's been twisted and distorted and corrupted into something that can't and doesn't make any sense. <laughs> Why is he talking to me like that? I pull myself up to my feet. He looks at me. As if I am as if I am an associate from his ministry days, calmly, coolly. I am here to update you on our situation. He says that last word delicately. His face gives nothing away. I have spoken to the Dark Lord. I have told him about Antonin's defection. As much as it grieves me to admit it, it seems I have need to thank you. Why? I ask quietly. Your plan to use the memory charm on Bellatrix worked magnificently. Ah, uh, if she had not been there to back up my story up, I do not think he would have believed it. But a happy coincidence, it seems that Antonin has been acting mutinously for some time. He has been displeased by his lack of authority compared to Bellatrix and I, and it appears he has voiced his content to the Dark Lord before his death. His death. The words tripped so easily out of his mouth. Death. Not murder. Death. There's no expression at all on his face. Doesn't he care? He's a death eater. He's an evil foul excuse for a human being. Of course he doesn't care. He has no need to suspect you, he goes on, and so it is my belief that he will not even consider questioning you about it. We are safe, my friend. You are safe. Just like that. But I don't feel safe. The entire situation reminds me of that game Jenga I used to play with my dad when I was little. One false move and the whole thing comes crashing down. Well, I'm glad. Well, I'm glad you seem to think so. My voice comes out angrier than I intended it to do. 
and I intended it to. I don't know why. I take a deep breath and try to calm down. Pardon my criticism? Pardon my cynicism, but I'm not entirely sure whether to believe <laughs> that he's not going to find out. He raises an eyebrow. When I could always take further steps to order in order to ensue you are protected. Would you like me to erase your memory for you? I'd be happy to do so. I take a deep breath, considering for a moment whether it would be so terrible. But then, if you were to take my memory of that night away, I wouldn't remember what happened afterwards. And wouldn't that be so convenient for him? No. Don't. I say it with a sigh. No, don't. <laughs> don't, Mama Mama. <laughs> he grins bitterly. No, I thought that you would have been averse to that idea. That's why I did not do it in the first place. It's a matter of trust. Don't you think? Trust. I can't believe him sometimes. Most of the time. All of the time. He cannot view your memory through legitimacy, he says calmly. And even if, and even so, if he were to question you about it, you are, should be safe as long as you can keep your mouth shut. Believe me, it's a technique I've perfected in the past. He stops then. I don't know why. Because the technique you've been using to keep what's going on between us to, between us secret from Voldemort. Whatever is going on between us. And you really believe that this will keep us safe? He curls a sour smile. What other option do we have? I am confident that he believes my version of the events. For it seems that luck is on our side. Antoine has been forever complaining about his lack of authority compared to Bellatrix and me, and his voice, his vocal discontent has proved to be our good fortune. There's bitter irony for him. Don't. I say quietly. He arches an eyebrow. Don't what? He's dead. You shouldn't mock someone when they're dead. His face darkens with amusement. If he's dead, and that means he's certainly not around to hear it, is he? I look at him, daring myself to say something, to ask him if he doesn't even feel the slightest bit bad about what he's done. But I can't, because I know the answer. Remorse isn't a word in the Malfoy dictionary. Not that Dolov, res the not that Dolov deserves any respect, of course. Still. So what now? I ask in the end, not really sure what else to say. Now. We keep our secret? He says, curtly, giving orders. He's used to that, I suppose. We don't say anything about the whole business end to anyone. Dolahov's replacement should arrive soon. It will be as if nothing has changed. Except for... You will no longer have to sleep with one eye open. <laughs> Won't I? Don't you even feel the slightest bit guilty about what you've done? I ask in desperation. We killed someone, Lucy. It's more murderers. He pointed his wand at me and a stinging hex whips across my cheek. He reaches up. I reach up. And I cradle the wound. The wound. Wound. Tears. Yikes, sorry. With tears stinging my eyes. Um, it's not the pain of the hex that's making me cry. I was already a murderer, mudblood, in case you'd forgotten. No, of course I hadn't forgotten. I think about it every damn day. Doesn't it keep you up at night? I whisper. Don't you ever have nightmares? But the lives you've taken? No, he says bluntly. I would be a poor excuse for a death eater if I did. I don't expect him to feel guilty about all